Hi, today I'd like to talk about one of our apps that's uh, available on our um, Intel and AMD based NAS, um, and that's BoxSafe. Um, so BoxSafe is a uh, backup tool that lets you back up um, Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace um, directly to the QNAP NAS, so you've got it uh, directly stored um, um, in your own premises, um, or perhaps a, a cloud hosted NAS somewhere else so that you've got your data in two separate places. Um, I'll click here on the supported services link on the uh, the top of the web page for it and it shows you all the different things that you can back up with each. Uh, so for Google Workspace you can do your email, your Google Drive, contacts and calendar. Uh, for Microsoft 365 you can do a bit more, you can do um, your email, OneDrive, uh, contacts, calendar, SharePoint and Teams. Um, so there's a lot of different options that you can uh, select on those. Um, Next, I'll talk about licensing. So I think to, to get the impression of what you can do with BoxSafe, it's better to give you the demo. So I'll show you that a bit later on. Um, when you're on our um, software store, um, you can just search BoxSafe and it's going to come up with five different options for you. Um, so I'm going to try and explain what each one is and which one you should click, depending what you want to do. If you wanted to have a, a little try, try with it for yourself. Um, the first is the BoxSafe trial. So BoxSafe trial is a 30 day um, uh, test with the device, you pick which one, whether it's BoxSafe for Microsoft 365 or for Google Workspace. Um, it gives you um, a thousand users, unlimited SharePoint sites, unlimited teams, um, and you get 30 days to test it. Um, it's a one-off thing, you can't um, extend this trial or anything like that. This is just a free trial with quite high limits to try anything. And for Google Workspace, um, effectively the same. Uh, 1000 users, unlimited share drives, again for 30 days. So the trial will run out after 30 days. The other option is the BoxSafe free option over here. So BoxSafe free um, is free forever. So you get to have this and this gives you a free forever BoxSafe uh, for either Google Workspace or Microsoft 365. Um, it's free to back up 30 users and 10 shared drives. Um, so if you were going to need, um, let's say, you know, you liked it after your trial, uh, you can use this to have 30 free users. If you had 60 users to back up, you only need to buy another 30 licenses. So it's just um, an easy way to get 30 uh, users off your total needed to buy later. So you can use the BoxSafe free, um, and this is free forever, it doesn't run out. Um, so you can use BoxSafe free for that. Uh, when you go into the different options of actually buying licenses, so BoxSafe for Microsoft um, is the one we'll look at first. You've got options here for monthly and annual. Um, so monthly, we're looking at uh, about $1.49 uh, US dollars there um, a month for one user, or you can go up to the annual amount, which is $9.49. Um, so if we click over to the Google one, um, it's exactly the same. So you've got the $1.49 or $9.49 and you've got yearly options as well. Um, if you're buying through our partners, you may find different options to buy, different amounts of users, things like that. So 100 users, things like that. So there's different options you can get, but through the software store, um, this is what is available. Um, so the NAS I'm using to, to show this is a TVS-H1288X, um, but it would really work on um, any NAS with, you probably want at least four gig of RAM in it if it was QTS. Um, to, to run it, but it would be an Intel or an AMD CPU um, uh, based NAS to, to get it. So over here, I've got BoxSafe installed. Um, I have um, already joined a domain, so I don't want to share all the information for joining the domain. But if you were to try and join a domain, normally you would have a blank screen here. You would come to the domain section and you choose add a domain and you choose whether it's a Google Workspace or a Microsoft 365. So for Google Workspace, you simply enter in your domain admin email address and the secret key. We have a tutorial there that you can click on on how to create the service key for it to uh, connect in. Um, if you were going to add in a Microsoft 365, you need a bit more information. So you, you would log into your Microsoft 365 portal. Um, you'd have your domain admin email address. You'd create a tenant ID, client ID, um, get the certificate, and there's usually a password with the certificate as well. So this is what I used. I filled out all of this information. Um, it went off and it found the domain. And the first screen you'd be presented with is this one. So this one is going to um, effectively tell you all the information that you've already filled in. And now it gives you the the options um, of what you're going to back up. So I've got all the services ticked here. Um, I've got it set auto on all of these, which basically means it's going to sync all users. And if any new users are created, it's going to automatically add them. Um, if you wanted to limit it to just some users, you can switch it over to manual here and then go to the users tab to add the specific users. But I've got it on auto for everything. So that's what I wanted. 
We then move over to the backup schedule. In the backup schedule, you choose um, different policies for all applications, or if you would like, you can create different policies um, for individual applications as well. So perhaps you want the email backed up more than the Teams or the other way around. Um, you can set them up on different schedules. So I want hourly backs up, backs, uh, backups of Teams, but I only want um, daily backups of the email, for example. So you can choose that schedule here with this option if you want to. So I'll go back to all applications. Um, so you can set up different options here. So I've got it set to scheduled. I did a one time but you can set hourly every one hour if you want it to um, there's a lot of different options you can pick here for the uh, the backups there's even an option down here to delete older versions so uh, we do go all the way up to uh, 24 months there but there are other options that you can select uh, if you want to as well so you would just take that and the drop down works so three months six months 12 months or 24 months are the options we've got there um, in the users tab, um, we've only got the uh, three users in this setup, so you can choose what to back up. So it's simply a case of ticking boxes for what you want to back up or not back up per user. Um, it's only showing four items here because these are the four items that are per user. Um, other things like um, share points are not per user. They're usually per site, um, so they're not listed there. Um, these would be under the site section. So in the site section, we can choose which share points we want to back up as well. And you can also add additional share points from that option there as well. Uh, Microsoft Teams, you can choose which teams you're backing up, so which which, which uh, different ones you've got. We've only got a few. This is just a test domain for us to do, so we've seeded it with a little bit of data. Um, but this is really all the settings that you will get uh, within the domain itself. So I'll come out of there. Uh, we can see I've got fully protected over there, so the backup completed successfully. And over here, all the uh, different items are colored in, not grayed out, so we were successful on the backup. Um, you get some nice logging as well, so you can see when things happened, what, what was happening, what was being done at different times, so you can export these logs as well if you want. Now I'm going to click into um, the domain that I've got created here, um, and it's going to show me um, effectively what's been backed up. Um, so I'm not having to um, log in a, uh, an Outlook client, uh, restore a PST file to look at any of this data. I can see it right here. Um, so here in the all mail option, for example, I can click on postcard of the day and it shows me an email that came in. So I can see that over on the side there. Um, you can expand this side window out if you want to see it bigger, but that's basically an email that came in. Um, if you wanted to check out different users, um, you've got the option here as a drop down at the top of the page. Um, so here you can pick the different users. So I've got the three users, so I could click onto a different email, uh, different user, for example, and it'll show me the different emails for that user. So I can look through the different options again. Um, clicking anyone I want, I can see all the different information that pops up there. So that's good. Um, so you've got that again for a third user. So you can select that user and go and have a look at that one. So you can see some information on the right hand side. So you get the nice preview so you can have a look through. Um, if we go to, um, I'll go back to the uh, top account, the primary one. I think that's the one with the most data. We go to contacts. I think contacts has no information for any of them. We didn't seed this with any information. But if you had um, uh, contact information, you'd see all that here, just like you would in the email. You'd be able to preview it and look at it. Um, same with calendar. You've got different calendar options. If there was calendar appointments created, you'd see them there as well. Um, with the OneDrive, uh, you can see the individual data per user. So we're looking at Amal's OneDrive here. So I can click into Fruits, for example, and there's a bunch of um, images that were backed up. So some test images that we've got. So you can click on it and get some information. Um, you can see different versions. If you've done multiple backups, you can see that. So you can pull down the information off it, download the image if you want to. Um, so it's really good at, at looking at the, the different uh, folders and things you want. You can go back to My Drive. It's nice and fast at navigating through everything as well. Um, again, you've got all the different users here, so you can click to different users if they've got any data. I don't think we put any data for any other user there, but um, you, you get the idea of being able to switch between the different ones there, so you get to see all the information. Uh, when we go to SharePoint, as SharePoint is sort of a per site thing rather than a per user thing, the drop down box at the top right has changed to the sites now, it's not users. Um, so here we're looking at the all company, so we can go through, we can click on different things, um, have a look in the folders, um, see what, what information we've got there. If you want to sort it just by a different site, you can come down here and, and pick a different site and choose different things. The, the view is going to change and let you see different things as well. Um, so it's really useful to, uh, to browse through the different items that you've got uh, backed up from your SharePoint. Um, the Teams option is, is really good as well, so it lets you see all the different conversations by the different teams. So again, you've got your Teams categories here, so depending which one you wanted to look at, not by per user. 
Um, so here in the general chat that was happening, we can see oh, there's a Happy New Year message. You can click on that and it opens up the preview of the chat over there. Um, as you're in there, it, if it's not, say, an image attached and it's actually text, you can see the text that was written. So you can see the channel that, um, that it was set in, the message that was sent. So you get all that information on the right hand side and you can browse through all the different channels and, and click through and see all the different messages. So it's really quick at popping um, information up. Um, so now uh, uh, I'll talk through a, an application which I thought was really useful. Um, we we recently had a, a charity get in touch with us where they had um, they have quite a high staff turnover. It's quite seasonal. Um, they have a fixed number of licenses with Microsoft 365, so they had 150 users, but the seasonal users that come back each year may not be the same users from year to year. It might be different, but there will always be somebody in those positions. Um, so what they were having to do is they were having to keep the data for the users um, for a period of seven years. So even if somebody only worked for them for three months, um, if they sent any emails or had a user account, that data has to be kept for seven years. And the issue they were having is they were having to keep them active um, effectively in Microsoft 365, have a license for them to be able to um, go look at the data to reactivate the account so that they could see the information. Um, this way they're able to do the backup of the data down to their local device and then they can free up that license and delete the user from the live setup um, so that they don't have to keep purchasing more Microsoft licenses to subscribe. Um, so it's it's much cheaper to get a license for BoxSafe than it is for uh, a Microsoft 365 license, for example. Um, so that was a really good application. I thought that it, it fitted in as well as just the data security, making sure you've got a copy of everything. Um, you know, they're, they're not too generous with the, the Google Works space and the Microsoft 365 if say somebody was to accidentally delete an email a file or something um, they only give you a small window to recover it it might be 30 days 45 60 days um, so there's there's only a limited time window uh, quite often the the admin of the domain has to get involved with restoring it as well this way it's just local on you you can set the expiration you could keep it for two years seven years you can keep that data for as long as you want um, so it's really really good for um, the data security aspect side of things as well um, in terms of set settings, uh, you've got different options for log settings, the storage where it's put, you can change the, the location it's stored on the NAS if you want, you can choose any licenses or purchase licenses from within it, um, uh, different concurrent tasks that you do. Concurrent tasks would be backup tasks, so each task is a... Uh, for example, I want to back up this user's email and then I want to back up that user's um, um, uh, Teams chat, for example. So you've got lots of different options there. So you can set the different options uh, to make it faster or use up less resources from the NAS if you want to. Uh, settings for users, so you can add different users for different roles, so whether they have full domain access, things like that, so you've got different options there. Uh, the roles, whether they're an auditor, backup manager, so you can, you know, let somebody log in, take care of, a, say, a subdomain, for example, um, have a look at the data but not see the data. So that maybe they can look and check the job was OK, but they can't go in and look at the actual data that was backed up. Um, and then you've got your license summary tab as well. So I've just got the uh, the one license pack installed for Microsoft 365, and it gives you the information about it. So three licenses were assigned because there was three users um, out of the licenses. I've got 100 activated on the NAS, so I can keep growing with more users if I need to. Um, tasks, so this is any tasks that are currently running, so I've got none running right now. Um, schedule tasks, um, I don't have a schedule set, I did a one-time backup and a completed task. So if you had a, um, a, a domain with a, a task that had fairly recently run, it would be here as well. But this is sort of gives you a summary of what's happening right now. Um, and you've also got the logs that I showed you earlier. So you've got a lot of information here that you can go through, um, so you can get... Um, an export of this as well so lots of pages of logs here so you can keep information so um, it just lets you know that things were viewed not just um, that a backup was done but also what did somebody go look at so every everything I've shown you here all those different options I was going through in the settings and showing you it's, it's logging every click I do um, including uh, which share list I was looking at which drive files I was looking at so it's telling me which user was doing it so you've got um, sort of accountability from that perspective. If somebody is logged in here doing some changes, you can see all this information um, and track back to when a change was made or or who viewed what. So it's, it's really, really powerful software. 
Um, so that's box safe. Um, again, it's it's not completely free. If you only have up to say 10 SharePoint sites, the 30 users for Microsoft 365 or 10 share drives, um, you, it is basically for free. You can use it. Um, if you wanted to do a bit more than that, it is licensed. So I did show you the cost there. Um, if you are in the UK or other regions, um, you may be able to get um, better pricing by talking to the sales in the region. Um, we, we can do different pricing than the US dollar pricing that's up on the site. So um, have a chat with us and we'll see what we can do to work with your needs um, that you have for, for your setup there. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, do let me know in the comments section down below and um, I'll try to cover them off as quick as possible. Um, but that was BoxSafe. Um, it's up to version 2 now. Um, this is uh, what the, the latest software looks, at, looks like. And again, it backs up Microsoft 365 um, and your Google Workspace. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.